Welcome back. And I've got another experiment for you today, and one I've been meaning to show you for a very long time. What we're going to look at is how quickly electricity moves in wires, and I call this one the world's most boring physics experiment. And then all you do is just put your drink down on the bar, and you leave it alone. I'm not sure you expected that to happen, and neither did I. So, let's try and explain what's happening. Electric fields apply forces to charges. Why does putting two transparent things on top of each other do something so strange when you turn it through 90 degrees? So what I want to look at with you today is just how quickly electricity flows in wires. Now, I think you know it's electrons flowing and they're negative, so they actually go from the minus to the plus in a circuit, slightly unusual. So let's take a simple circuit here and bear with me and let's see how quickly it takes the electricity to get from the battery to the lamp. So here we go, three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. So it seems pretty instant. But in fact, things aren't quite as simple as they seem. So from that very simple experiment, it appears that electricity flows pretty much infinitely quickly in a circuit. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to make the electrons visible in the circuit so you can see just how quickly they move. Now that's going to be really tricky to do. So I'm going to show you a way that we can actually make the charge flowing in the circuit visible and it's that that I call the world's most boring physics experiment. But of course, if you know me, it may seem boring to begin with, but it's far more interesting than it might first appear. So to show you just how fast electricity flows in a circuit, I'm going to have to make the charge carriers visible. Now, I've taken the lamp out, but uh, what was flowing in the wires were electrons. But what I'm going to do in the gap here, and the pipette at the beginning of the video was a bit of a hint, is I'm going to put a liquid, and that liquid is going to contain ions. So as the electrons flow around the circuit, they're then going to cause ions to flow in the gap, and if I can make those ions visible, we should see them moving. So it's a bit of a tricky fella to set up this, but I've got a piece of filter paper that I'm going to put in the gap with the ions in it, so it's going to be wet. I'm going to put it on a microscope slide. Um, I've got some optics pins here um, that I can just make connections with. So I'm putting that down on the slide, and I'm putting a crocodile clip onto that side, and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Uh, one or two of you will realise this is a bit like the electrolysis you do in chemistry. So here's our little cell as it were um, and then what I'll do is I'll connect the power supply to that so there's the negative and here's the positive and if I'm going to connect it up now um, nothing's going to happen because um, the charge carriers in here are um, stuck in the material so we need to put a liquid on here to allow the charge carriers to move across the piece of filter paper and that's what I'm going to do next so, we need some coloured ions, and I'm going to use potassium permanganate, and some of you might note that if I spill this on myself, it won't make any difference, because I seem to be wearing a purple shirt today. And to make sure they can freely move across here, I've got a little bit of dilute sodium hydroxide. So, I'm going to put a drop of that on the filter paper, and it's going to make the filter paper wet. So, there we go. And I'm making sure that it's going up to the connections and making all the paper wet. So that's that one sorted. And all I need to do now is to put a little crystal of potassium permanganate on the slide and switch on the circuit. So we've got our wet slide, which will allow conductance of ions across. I'm going to pick up a crystal of potassium permanganate, put it on the slide right in the centre, grab another one. Here we go. That's a bit bigger. And um, the potassium permanganate contains two ions. Um, one that's the potassium that's po positive and the manganate that's negative. So if you think about it, when we switch on the circuit, 
the positive potassium ions are going to get attracted to the minus and uh, the negative manganate ions are going to be attracted to the plus. Now, remember how quickly the light lit up. So let's see what happens. So you're ready. Let's see how quickly the electricity flows in this little cell. Three, two, one, go. Well, I think you'll agree that was pretty unimpressive. I've just turned it off for the moment whilst I talk. So you can see why I call it the world's most boring physics experiment. But actually what's going on is much more interesting. So I'm going to film it now over a very long period of time and then speed that film up and show you what happens. And then we'll have a bit of an explanation of how quickly electricity flows in wires. So I left this running for just about an hour um, whilst I was teaching a class and look at what's happened. You can see from the photograph that the colour of the potassium permanganate has smudged out in one direction. It was an incredibly slow process but what you're actually seeing there is the electricity flowing through this and taking the coloured ions across the piece of uh, paper. And it's a very, very slow process. So let's see if we can explain this just a little bit further. So at the beginning we said, let's see if we can see how quickly electricity flows in a circuit. So you can think of the electrons flowing in this circuit and then pushing the ions across at pretty much the same speed and then the electrons completing the route. And so the electrons moving in the wires are moving at about the same speed as the ions moved across the gap on this piece of paper. And as I said before, it's an incredibly slow process. And I'll try and explain to you just how slow this is. So what we've got from this is electrons move very, very, very slowly in wires. And A-level students will know we call this a drift velocity. They don't come out of the battery and rush across to the other side they take an incredible amount of time. It's millimetres per minute to move through the wires. Um, it's interesting to think that if the electricity was DC from the power station that applies the uh, energy to my laboratory to light the lights, in the whole of my teaching career, the electrons still wouldn't have got here. They go very, very slowly, about five millimetres per minute. And so how do we explain that the light bulb comes on instantly. So at the start I showed you a light bulb and I said that if we connect to it, it comes on absolutely instantly. Okay, It's a very, very quick process indeed. But what you have to think about is when we connect the circuit, the electrons here push the electrons here, which push the electrons there. So the effect, my students call it a sort of domino effect, it isn't quite. But you can imagine that if one electron pushes Every electron in the line is also pushed sideways. So the effect of the moving is very, very quick indeed. But each electron is moving with a drift velocity that's very, very slow. And that's why it took ages and ages for the colour to cross the slide. And that's why I call it the world's most boring physics experiment. Because you have to spend ages watching this to actually see the speed that electricity travels. Of course it's not boring at all, it's really interesting. It's just way slower than you would have ever guessed. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment and learnt a little bit about how quickly electrons actually do travel down wires. Anyway, I'll be doing another experiment soon and I look forward to seeing you then.